Hello again and welcome to another Morning Mondays. This is episode 38. So guys, this week I have been working on painting up some more classic 3rd edition Stormtroopers for my Mordian 50th Rifles Assault Corps. That's the uh, the third platoon that I am working on. Um, I've painted a few of these models up before, guys, so I'm not going to go into too much detail. Um, but needless to say that I absolutely love these these models. I love these sculpts. Um, I think they are a truly unique looking design from Games Workshop. And um, I find them very, very enjoyable to paint. They're very different to anything that you sort of come across these days with the uh, with the games workshop models um i will say and this is just a quick warning because if when i first started painting these guys up i did a mordian mondays on it and i went into excruciating deal detail uh, but i will say that these if you're thinking of painting these models i highly recommend that you do get some even just a little five man squad they're very unique very cool um but they are rough sculpts I, I love these I, I love these guys because I have huge rose tinted glasses nostalgia goggles on for these things but uh, they are they are rough sculpts you know they, they're not multi-part they are mono pose there are no gaps apart from gaps you know apart from in between the legs there are no there are no gaps in the models so um, that means you will find there are just large chunks of metal where normally you would expect there to be. Uh, a gap so just be aware of that and some of the sculpts are really rough these guys were designed by hand you can tell that these were all designed out of green stuff you know that it, it's it's fairly obvious it's none of this this 3d malarkey that we have these days so there is a lot of there's a lot of roughness i'm painting up some uh, a plasma gun and a grenade launcher at the moment for this for the second squad that i'm working on and the and the uh and the plasma gunner's chest is just this it's just this big square it's just got a rectangular body and the uh, the plasma gun itself is massively too thick because it's it should be it should be thinner but they've had to mold it into the guy's chest and he also looks like he's wearing a, a nappy or you know that's a diaper for our transatlantic cousins and same for the uh, grenade launcher his chest just sort of just molds off into one of his ammo pouches so they are rough sculpts don't get me wrong the special weapons tend to be quite rough i will say the riflemen themselves are actually fine no issues there and the flamer and the melter gun sculpts are both pretty um pretty tight as well so um although the, the flame it also has a bit has a nappy slash diaper on it the melter gun i'd say is probably the cleaner special weapon sculpt which is good because melter guns are at least a, a semi-viable special weapon for for the science so um just that's just a bit of a heads up for you guys in the painting front um just so you know which colors i use i i like to match my colors on my stormtroopers to my regular guys i do that. i like to have a consistent scheme across the whole army so last week obviously we had the uh, the inquisitor and i matched his colors to my army just because i just feel it looks better on the characters um so yeah it's the normal paint scheme so the black is a bad and black the blue is my is my crag blue then it is washed in Draconoff nightshade and then it is dry brushed in cardinal sky Green is Caliban green, then uh, washed in Bale Tan. I really like washing it in Bale Tan. Now, a lot of people say, do you not wash it in Nolan Oil? And no, I don't, because when I wash it in Nolan Oil, it, it goes almost like, it goes almost black color. It's too dark. And I was really I have really struggled with making this paint scheme not look super, super dark. So what I do is I, I wash it in Bale Tan, which doesn't, do a huge job of highlighting recesses and whatnot in the models but what it does is it gives the green it gives the caliban green um a real smoky i like to call it like a smoky color it's like smoked green glass as i would uh, describe it and then when you edge highlight it and dry brush it what you've actually got what i've what i've discovered is, I don't know if I discovered it, but what I have personally, you know, for myself discovered, is that you, you have this multiple layers of depth of colour. So you have the green with the smoky effect, with the edge highlighting, with the dry brushing. So it's almost like you've got four layers of colour in there. So when, when you look at that green, it's not just a flat block of, glee, uh, of green, 
it's actually four different colors and four different colors all mingled into one some brighter some darker and some just breaking up the breaking up the uh the the blockiness of the color so uh, that's just my that's what i found works works really well um i don't know some people are probably tell me that non oil is better but like i said i find it makes the model really dark it basically looks like edge highlight highlighting black with green which doesn't look as doesn't look as good at um so there you go that's my that's my little piece of advice if anyone's wondering how to to paint this up um uh so the rest of the colors uh, like i said fairly fairly normal You've, it's just i don't i don't edge we, i know some people find it unusual i don't edge highlight the brown of the equipment or the grenades i just i don't know why i i'm just very conscious of adding too much busy work to the models i'll be honest i like to have a sort of in between sort of um i like to have an in between the there's a busyness of the model and the detail of the of the paint scheme it's why i don't like a lot of the new games workshop models because I, I find that they can be a little busy um but um I, so so I, I don't do the edge highlighting on on those bits i maybe i may i could be wrong you know I could, i'm willing to accept that i'm wrong on that second part of it is is that um i have a lot of these guys to paint up and i still as much as i want to put like 300 percent effort into every rifleman um i really you know i i really feel like i would get burnt out and i i have experienced true hobby burnout when paid to my jeans to the cult because every single man was painted to the absolute best of my ability and it it killed me i've painted more guys in my more than 50 rifles in a short space of time than i did with my jeans to the cult in a longer space of time so I think I've got the balance here just right. Got got all the the shading, got the got the multiple thin coats, the shading, and a smidge of edge highlighting and dry brushing. I feel like that works well enough. Um, so there you go. That's my that's my technique on on the on the models. I would say now I would be confident, be much more confident now if I had to paint an army a yellow army. I know yellow is is a tricky color. A very tricky color um but i found the way to do it really tr is to is to it, i found the way to paint yellow and i do it on my grenades and on my lamps and i've done it on some shoulder pads and stuff in the past is you base it with avalanche sunset just one base coat of that don't do more than that and then you do multiple i'd say three layers of thin flash gets yellow and then you wash it in uh cassandora comet um, that's the yeah. Let me just check. That's the wash that I do use. Do Cassandra yellow. Yeah. So that's how you do yellow. And I've, I've experimented. So if I was to if I was to be more confident, I would definitely paint up a, a proper yellow army now. But obviously, I'm committed to this scheme. And the really interesting thing with this paint scheme, and I know I've said it a hundred times, but I just, I just have to say it because I think it's important. When it's part done, it doesn't look that good when you add it looks too dark and the colors the blue and the greens don't quite go together when you add the washes and you add the edge highlights it looks it, it, it really i really like that the blue and the green working together when you add those two details i think i think it works much better um and yeah so and i've had you know i've had a couple of people say well what was sort of the inspiration behind behind the behind the colors and i'll be honest with you guys it's a bit of a bit of an unusual one and i think i've mentioned this before as well but i i used to paint a color scheme that i wanted to paint partly limited by what colors i had available at the time uh and then i sort of got i don't know if it was a case if i lost my imagination but i it was with the start of my black templars to be honest i was like i want to collect black templars i love the fluff that is around black templars so i painted my black templars um completely traditionally and then when i moved on to my jeans to the cult i was like i'll take inspiration from i've always wanted to have like a brotherhood of nod army and so i took inspiration from uh command and conquer series for my jeans to the cult and have a brotherhood of nod jeans to the cult 
And then when it came to Mordian Fittius, I was like, well, I could paint them like classic Mordians, or I could paint them in like classic British Empire colour schemes, because that would work quite well. Or I could paint them, uh, again, a quite traditional black and red style army, or blue and white style army. There's lots of things I could have gone for. But what I realised is that I wasn't coming up with something that was truly unique. I wanted to have a colour scheme that was was mine. And I think that's something that can be very I think it's very important when you when you putting your heart and soul into a force that you do make that force your own because it will allow you to get past burnout. It will allow you to it will make you excited to want to sit down and paint. And so what I so what I came up with is I thought, well what you know, I literally I, I Google things like green and blue military uniform, green and blue morning iron guard, and not much came up. A lot of classic morning iron guard schemes, and I do love the classic morning iron guard look, but I thought that's not unique. And it really was that the inspiration was, guys, because I just I wanted my guys to look different. I wanted my color scheme to be unique. I feel like the original Mordian Fisher's Rifles color scheme of the red and the tan and the white helmets was actually a very unique unique color scheme and um i really enjoyed that one but i was i had this fluff about starting again so that but that was the inspiration behind it basically i wanted a unique color scheme and i, I won't lie sometimes i do get my little doubts i think oh you know maybe i should go for something that's a bit more makes a bit more sense you know something that you know, seen before a bit more mainstream, but I've, I'm glad that whenever I when I when I had those doubts at first, I'm glad I pushed them to one side, and committed to the color scheme. And that and and by doing that, I think the mods have come out much better in the the second half of the well, of, in the current part of the project. I wouldn't say I'm anywhere near halfway done. So so yeah, guys, that's that's just the if I was to give any advice to um to 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 people out there thinking of collecting a horde army i mean i the, the question i get all the time is how do you how do you how can you possibly paint hundreds and hundreds of models how, how do you face it it's not just completely overwhelming and obviously i've talked about bite-sized chunks and stuff in previous videos but i would say the best thing to do is to make sure that you find something that to find this color scheme that you're actually genuinely passionate about that you that you like and that is your own and that is cool and unique. And when you put the models on the table, people go, wow, I like that. That's cool. That's different. I can't tell you the motivation I've I've had from my from painting my models is from you guys. When I've not necessarily from the I've, I've had a lot of positive feedback in the morning Mondays, don't get me wrong, but that's often just one squad at a time. When I uh, the first time I got some some really, really good feedback on the on the uh, the fifty rifles was when I had that battle versus the Death Guard. It was my combined Mordian and Armageddon Steel Legion army. And that was the first battle report where people were like, whoa, those Mordians look great on the tabletop. And that was that was a really, really big bit of motivation. And then since then I've been getting more and more of those comments as I uh, as I as I, you know, build up the Mordian forces more and I got loads of positive comments again on the Armageddon and Mordian Angard versus the Tau battle report that I did most recently. So it does pay off and so where i'm going with this long rambling ranty thing with this you know the, the painting side of this week's video is if you're thinking of getting into your uh painting backlog um and you want to paint up if you want to collect a horde army the most important thing you can do is just take your time at the beginning and just paint up a few different color schemes and don't necessarily listen to other people too much just go with one that you think looks the coolest that's what i did um and when you and what looks what the great thing about imperial guard is when you get when you deploy them all on the field of battle they always look really good and the reason why they always look really good is because it looks like a proper army you know when you see a space an army and it's just like seven whirlwinds and three thunderfire cannons all crammed together around one so one officer who's giving everyone a million buffs it doesn't look like an army it looks like it looks like a power list a power game list. it doesn't, doesn't look like a great army 
when someone puts out a proper guard arm and you've got your ranks of infantry support by your tanks and your artillery and you've got the smorgasbord of units which all look like a proper military force and then you've got them painted up in a really good unique color scheme across the whole board that is when that is when people will go whoa and that's when you look at your own army and go i did that that looks great i did that so there you go guys a little bit of you know a little bit of painting inspiration for you guys um so one thing i wanted to talk about um i wanted to mention as well before anyone says it in the video moving on from the painting and the hobbying side to now moving towards the sort of tactics side of it is um i know people have i know people who have who have first watched this video or, or new to the Morden Mondays will will go why have you done a melter gun and a flamer in your squads well that is not the best tactical choice don't get me wrong I know that's not the best tactical choice you know, some people come you know come to the channel thinking oh yeah I've been told this morning glory guy's got some good tactics and then they watch this video and goes he's an idiot he's using melter guns and flamers in his silent squads why does anyone you know what the hell is this guy talking about I know these aren't the, the best models, uh, to, and I know traditionally with size you should always have a matching pair of special weapons, you know, double melter gun, double plasma gun, and a plasma pistol on the sergeant, for example. Um, the reason I do this again, guys, is from a, is, is from a hobby point of view. So um, the ideal thing to have in this one would be a pair of melter guns, of course. But I, ha I want to get every model in my army painted up, every single one of them, including the not great options let's be honest the shitty options like flames and sound squads are a shitty option they've got some tools to make them work now but they're still a, a crap option so but i don't if i i know if i don't paint them and i just paint the good options i will not want to go back and paint the crap options loads and loads of them because i think like why am i doing this so what i've done is i've made a promise to myself that for every good weapon that i paint for my sides like a melter gun like a plasma gun i will also paint one suboptimal weapon choice like a flamer like a grenade launcher so that's why i do this now it doesn't necessarily mean i'm going to use the flamers all that often although i've been surprised i've been surprised recently by how effective flamers can be i'm starting to see why they cost that six points um doesn't but it doesn't necessarily mean i'm going to use them but it means i've got them painted up and then if there's an addition change which is there's rumored to be one uh, soon the the inside track that i have my inside you know my my inquisitorial spies tell me that um the announcement for ninth edition will be coming in may so a couple of months away guys i've got nothing i can't tell you whether that is 100 percent accurate or not all i can tell you is that um that is that is the rumor that is the, the the message going to be in the first week of may so interesting but we'll get more information about that when the time when the time comes more information i'm sure ninth is on the way guys i didn't think i'll be honest six months ago i didn't think ninth would be on the way now because now i can say pretty confidently that i think ninth edition is going to be on the way um i think it's more going to be from what i've heard on the grapevine i think it's going to be version eight edition 8.5 It'll be like the transition from 6th to 7th, where 7th, in theory, improved upon 6th. It wasn't a massive change. The same will be true between 8th and 9th edition. It will be edition 8.5 or 8.1 even. This this is going to be fixing things like to hit modifiers. That's what my inside sources tell me. We'll see if it pans out or not. We'll see. Um, for from what I mean, I know a lot of you will be like, "Ooh, neither of you is morning glory." Tell me more. I honestly don't know anything concrete. The one thing that I have been that I have picked up on with when I had when I've had my ear to the ground is supposedly they will fix to hit modifiers, so you can't you can't stack them. A bit like you can't stack cover, basically. So if you you can have a minus one to hit modifier, that's that's it. You have a minus one to hit modifier. You know, if you have cover, you have plus one to save. You can't stack. You can't stack like multiple cover abilities. So that's that's the one thing. So there you go, guys. That's that's the the bits of information that are coming out. Early announcement in May. Totally gone off topic. 
Tell you what I was talking about, it just, it just came up, didn't it? So, anyway, like I said, so I basically I treat my, to go back to the, uh, the, 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 the weapon loadout choice, I paint one shit weapon and one good weapon to keep myself motivated to make sure that I, I paint all my models up. That's basically it. Also, I know I paint, you know, the sergeant in this squad is the rifleman without the gas mask on. I know sound sergeants can't take uh, hotshot las guns, but I've, this is, this is the options you get with old school scions and also i will say that i often um like to try these guys out as deathcore creek grenadiers because deathcore creek grenadiers can take hotshot las guns so i i've got multi multi role models there you go so went off on a bit of a tangent there went off on a bit a bit of a uh, a diversion tactics wise what am i thinking with the scions well currently my modified rifles list is has large points large segments of points tied up in abhumans now i'm not a big fan of abhumans i prefer to have more infantry but i have a 2000 point list but it's got a full nine bulgrin star and a, and a six brute ogren squad so that's a lot of points tied up that's over 500 points easily so um the worry the thing is that i want to be able to include more and more regular humans so i'm painting up lots and lots of sands and and the, and the plan will be the plan will be to have in the army uh when i when i if i have a if i if you're assuming that this doesn't change anything too much and there aren't any too many updates but the plan will be to have two full platoons of guardsmen um you know that's 120 guys back those up with veterans and heavy weapon squads and maybe even a couple of conscript squads just to bulk out the, the bodies on the table and then to have a foot third platoon to be, to be a full deep striking 60 man scion blob drop possibly coming in in two waves wave you know uh 30 and then 30 and the plan is that they are going to be bringing all the pain we're talking you know as many melter guns and plasma guns that i can get my hands on so that is the plan with the science that's why i'm painting so many of these guys up um when this squad is this squad's now finished this is squad number four that is painted up was it squad number five i can't even remember it might actually be squad number five i'm just going to check now i may have been busier than i thought with these guys uh one two one two three four five one two three four five one two three four five no this is squad four i was right so this is squad number four that's painted up um and i also have uh squad number five on the way as well which is a plasma grenade launcher squad so this has given me the foundations to do some some proper drops and what i like to do with my pure infantry guard tactics and what my what i will be honest with you my genes to look cool are better at doing currently than my 50th rifles but that will soon change is the reason why i've i've had great success with my all neophyte genes to look cool army is because i open up what i like to call a second front uh so i will have my main army butting its head sledgehammering itself against the front of the enemy army but I will open up a significant second line. Now you need to do this with at least with at least sixty guys. I'll be honest with you. you my that's why I love doing it with neophytes in the cult because I literally outflank sixty to hundred infantry and they just come sweeping in on. So with my cult, I often open a second and a third flank. But with my um, with my guard, what what the plan is. And I've been doing this since fifth, sixth, and seventh edition. I, with the, with what I used to be able to do it with Captain Arahem and the old Codex, and be able to outflank loads of stuff. And what it lets you do is it lets you get up the board without taking any casualties because you've got people coming in from reserve. Also means that your main attacking force gets some pressure relieved from it. It means that the enemy has to divert firepower to get rid of the second front. Also, they don't that second front is just going to start tearing into them now i think it's really really important to have this second front i do because i the amount of games that i have played where i haven't had this ability to deep strike in more people and i've had to just slog it up the board 
Um, I've had I've had too many of those to count, and they're always, always hard fought and often very close victories or even defeats because you you have to just keep throwing men into the maelstrom which of course i like doing i'm an infantry commander but when you have the second front tactic it actually i whenever i've used proper second second front opening second front tactics i have found that the victories have come much easier because what happens is the second front guys come in turn two turn three the opponent is forced to deal with them and whilst they're dealing with them the front line forces actually are able to have a bit of a surge and they're able to take a lot more ground and take less casualties they get up there so what your enemy actually finds is turn one they get to blast the crap out of you fair enough it happens then turn two your first second wave of second front guys come in and the enemy has to like spend their next turn clearing that out then turn three your next wave of, of second of, of, of second front guys come in and then turn four comes along and all those people that they all those people from the first wave that were deployed at the beginning of the game they're suddenly in their face they're suddenly bayonet charging them and it's like ah oh, you know and then even and then by the time they've broken through all that it's turn it's turn five it's turn six the game's ending the game is ending and they're like looking around and they've been kept penned in their most of the time they've been penned in their deployment zone or the or haven't got past the midfield of the board and i'm there sat with little remnant scraps and squads one man two man sometimes four man if they're you know lucky just on all the objectives and that's how this this sort of infantry wave army works that's the tactics that i'm going for so that's why i'm painting up many 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 silence because uh for too for too long i've not been able to fully take advantage of my second front tactics and i am rectifying that as fast as i possibly can so i've actually on the set on the next squad of signs i've actually already got all the green and blue and i've started doing the brown on them so there you go so should you seeing lots and lots of uh scions hitting the mordian 50th rifle battlefield soon assuming i will be able to get some uh some battles in so just moving away from just moving away from hobby and tactics for a second delving unfortunately into real life i know it's fairly it's probably fairly obvious but i'll go i'll say it anyway for those of you that aren't aware the uk has now gone into full lockdown over the coronavirus which means um you know i can't i can't leave my flat until uh you know, unless it's, unless it's for essential supplies fortunately you know i've got i've got enough so i don't need to leave very often but um that means that it means i can't i can't meet up for for battle reports so there will be a slowdown on that front unfortunately just with me and johnny uh, my regular opponent and the and the owner of the scholar progenium channel um we were just getting back into the groove of doing one of these things every month you know every couple you know one for, well, two two a month one for his channel one for my channel and we were really getting back into the groove of doing that and unfortunately obviously we're, we're both having to be lock, both locked down at the moment so there will be a slowdown on the on the battle reports and i'm thinking there obviously there is some opportunity via things like tabletop simulator and vassal but we'll see we'll see how they how they pan out i'm not i've tried using those things before and they're not they're not ideal i'll be honest but um you know desperate times desperate measures so um the thing is that the, the channel is going to be sort of going back to its to its roots i suppose and i'm going to be doing a big focus on tactics videos tactics videos and unit reviews and so i should be hopefully you noticed last week after i've been settled in the lockdown um i was actually able to churn out I think it was four videos last week i think i only missed one one day three or four videos and they were all pretty pretty good ones so um the, so the point is is that hopefully there will whilst there will be less battle reports the plan is for me to churn out lots of tactics and painting uh videos and i know that i got i got a huge overwhelmingly positive uh, response to the fluff videos so people have really said that they want me to do more than 50th rifle fluff videos definitely going to do that and i'm going to base it all on real life things that have happened with the army 
really you know, I'm going to base it on uh, on uh, on how my I'm going to base the fluff of my of my army the, the the 40k fluff on how it has evolved in real life you know where it started from with my KD models and moving into the to the iron guard models so so there you go guys so um yeah so sad that we won't be getting as many battle reports but I mean this this lockdown is 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 difficult and the virus is awful you know it's starting to affect uh people that i know in real life which is scary it's it, it is getting closer and closer to home um you know my parents are in the at-risk category which is obviously very very worrying um but the, the you know the silver lining of of this is that i am at home a lot more i am you know my work is it is quieter you know uh just naturally it is it is quieter and so that means i do have more time to make lots of videos and it means i do have lots of time to do lots of painting so the one silver lining from this is that um is that there will be a lot more content and so between between us between me doing stuff for the channel and you guys watching and liking and commenting on the videos between between us um you know we we can do our bit to try, you know, get through the next next three months and hopefully not 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 die of boredom on the way. So there we go, guys. Um, just giving you a little little update on the direction the channel is sort of being forced to go in. But there we go. So um, plan painting plan for the next week. I plan on getting the five the next five man squad done. And the the plan with getting the the edge highlighting on first platoon done before the end of April has obviously gone to shit. <laughs> it's obviously gone out the window. Uh, that's because of this. I would have got that done in time, but there was this painting um, painting event on the Bolton Chainsaw, which made me want to do this instead. So um, the plan is to get the 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 next five man squad of science done and the Tempesta Prime for that for that. Uh, for that force done and then that will be done by next week and then i will be going back and updating first platoon so there you go so that should start mid-april because i've got until the 12th of april to get these guys done that should start mid-april and then hopefully end of april end of april we will see a two fully done platoons of more than 50s rifles the beginning that the fleshing out of the uh, of the assault corps and then after that it will be i will be um very much building up the assault corps and working on the third infantry platoon the third the, the third the third the assault corps I, I think of the assault corps as like third platoon but realistically they're their own they are their sort of separate entity you know they are so it that the, 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 it's difficult i'll call I'll, I'll just call them the assault corps and then when i refer to third platoon you'll know that i'm talking about my regular infantry platoons so there we go um that's all for this week guys i know this video has been all over the place we've covered hobby in a lot of detail we've covered tactics in a bit of detail we even dabbled in real life. Two videos on the troll where I've dabbled in real life. God, I normally like to keep real life out of uh, out of my videos, but you can't. Sometimes you can't help it. Sometimes you can't help it. So there you go, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please leave lots of comments, um, and I will, you know, I'll do my best to get back to you. So thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video, and of course, I'll see you guys next time.